Theater is a form of connection and communication all centered around the art of collaboration. From the community playhouse and educational institution to the many regional theaters on Broadway and in the corporate entertainment world, including cruise ships and industrial events, collaboration is at the heart of every show, every production. Collaboration is the blending of art and science, of creativity and the production process. It is the dance that happens when artists, technicians, designers, producers, musicians, marketers, and a wide variety of passionate individuals bring their talents together to develop a singular experience. Projects with Jason is one such collaboration seeking to inspire, educate, connect, and entertain through a series of unique, multifaceted experiences which seek to explore the wonderful spirit that is generated when professionals of all backgrounds and experiences intersect with rising theater students and educators, bringing together working professionals and talented students in a crucible of collaboration that happens when you put people together in a room and charge them to create something. The results are very special. This series of works is designed to enrich and inspire students, educators, artists, and all others as we look to connect, be entertained, and grow as artists and human beings. I'm Jason Daunter. Join me in our Projects with Jason team as we head to Charter Oak High School in California and Westerville South High School in Ohio to celebrate talented students and devoted educators. We also welcome an inspirational guest with an amazing voice and attitude. From Aladdin, A Musical Spectacular, and the films, The Sessions, and Carmen, Jennifer Kumiyama is with us. Louis Gallagher is your host. This is Virtual Cabaret. Hello and welcome back to Virtual Cabaret. I'm your host once again, Louis Gallagher. Thanks for coming back. Uh, last week's episode was a lot of fun and I'm ready for round two. If you haven't subscribed already, we are seven subscribers away from hitting 700. So if you want to make history right now, all you have to do is click subscribe. I mean, it's really easy to do. I, I would do it personally, but I'm already subscribed. Tomorrow we have a great show. We have Lori Metcalf on Artists in Conversation. So don't miss that. If you're subscribed, you'll get notified when we go live. We're also on like every social media. Follow us at Projects with Jason on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Hit us up on those pages. And with that, I mean, I think, I think it's time to get things started. I hope you like my bow tie tonight. It is a self-tied bow tie. I want to make that clear. I did, I did train myself in order to do this. It's, it's a skill. It's definitely a skill. Well, tonight we have uh, Charter Oak High School, which is located in California, and Westerville High School located in Ohio. So let's bring in those teachers from those schools right now. Come on in. Here we are. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello. There we go. There we go. Great. Um, welcome. So, uh, to start off, uh, let's get some information about both of your schools, uh, how many students are in your program, and all that uh, fun stuff. Um, we'll start with you, Nicole. Um, hi. So my name is Nicole Perci. I am the theater director for Charter Oak High School, but I'm actually also the theater teacher for our um, theater middle school, Royal Oak Middle School. So between the two programs, um, we have about 145 students enrolled in our classes. And then in our after school programs, um, I'd say each production involves anywhere from 60 to 70 students, some who are enrolled in classes and some who are just part of the thespian society um, who volunteer and perform and uh, work crew and things for us. Awesome. And, and Matt, what about you? Um, so I'm also a theater teacher. I actually teach throughout the three high schools. Um, so we have um, 
in our district, I teach uh, like an intro to theater and an acting course uh, at all three high schools. And then I'm an international baccalaureate theater teacher uh, at Westerville South. Um, and so it's great to travel and get to know all the kids. And then I work with the after school program at Westerville South where I do um, all of my after school work and production work. Um, and uh, we've got a, a troop of about 250 students. Um, we're proud thespian uh, members and we love being a part of everything. Great. Um, and so what shows did you guys lose to the shutdown? I mean, we could start with you. Um, uh, nine to five, the musical. Oh, okay. Uh, both of my uh, students who are performing tonight were in the show. Um, you know, yes, uh, that's, we were like four weeks into actor rehearsal, uh, gearing up for our state conference, which we also lost in Ohio. And uh, so, yeah, we made the best of it, but it was tough. Yeah. And, and Nicole, what about you? So we were um, about to start up the second weekend of Into the Woods. Um, so thankfully, mm. we got to finish our, our first weekend run. So um, a lot of family and friends did get to come see it. But, you know, closing weekend, that's when most parents and grandparents, everybody, you know, had family coming in from out of town. So both of our performers tonight are also um, uh, members from our uh, Into the Woods cast who um, had their final weekend cut short. And then we also, over here in California, lost our state thespian conference. And both yeah. of them are going to be attending that as well. It was really heartbreaking, you know, to have them miss out on so much right at the end of a really eventful year for them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wanted to ask you both, um, what is one of your biggest joys in teaching youth about theater? We can start with either of you. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Um, for me, it's watching students um, learn to find their voice and learn to realize that the things that they have to say are important and of value. Um, one of the struggles that I always had when I started out with just teaching just at the middle school was having students say, you know, I don't I don't want to go up on stage. They wanted to be involved, but a lot of it is I just want to work through. I just want to work backstage, which absolutely all the technicians in the world, super important jobs. But I wanted to make sure that they weren't shying away from something because they themselves didn't feel like um, they they had value or anything to offer or add to the conversation. So, you know, we did a lot of improv. We start with um, a lot of small group projects and then work our way up to bigger things. And, and it's so wonderful to watch students who start out um, so, so quiet, you know, go up on stage and perform for the first time in front of family and friends and just to see those tears in family's eyes of, I had no idea my kid could do this, or I've never seen my child do anything like this. And, and it's really wonderful to get to be that teacher who brings that out of somebody. Um, and then to watch, you know, how they carry that into their lives, their professional lives. You know, not every kid's going to walk through and be a professional actor. And I don't think that's what Matt's expecting either as a theater teacher. I think we're really teaching skills that will be with them forever. You can't unlearn what you learn in theater class. They won't forget it. Yeah, yeah that's I, fantastic. I totally agree, Nicole. And, um, you know, curricularly, I think theater is so crucial because it teaches the public relations and it teaches how to interact with one another and how to look someone in the eye, how to shake a hand, how to stand tall and confident, uh, how to live in your own skin. Um, how to collaborate, how to deal with people you don't like, <laughs> um, how to respect um, each other. How other's. to respond under, under pressure, yes, solve the problem yes. in the blink of an eye. And so curricularly, I think it's a vital uh, resource for students because as, as curriculum changes, there isn't, so, there isn't a lot of time. Um, we don't see a lot of like required speech classes or anything like that. And so I think it becomes really important that... Um, that we're finding a way to bring students out of their shell. Um, extracurricularly, I think it's you know vital because while some students find their sports and they find academics and they find different ways to make themselves feel great, theater becomes that for a set of kids. And uh, so it's become my you know life's passion to allow that space for them to do that. And of course we have students that you know, come in and out and, and sort of do it all. Um, and that's even better just to gain perspective and, you know, to sit around and tell stories together and be creative and use our imagination. Um, it's also been a really powerful to tool for um, inclusivity at our school. And it's something we've been able to start some conversations uh, that I know my students feel really proud of. And, and so that's really been fulfilling for me. That's great. Well, I, I can't wait to see both of uh, your students perform tonight. Um, and with that, let's take a look at this video um, of both of your programs.
Well, um, every week here at Virtual Cabaret, we have a special guest, and this week we have a treat. Let's welcome Jennifer Kumiyama. Come on in. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good to see you. I love your bow tie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, so uh, while we have you for a little bit, um, do you have any words of encouragement for the students who are performing tonight? Uh, just do your best. Our only job as performers is to bring your best to the table and leave it on the stage. That's that's all you can do and have fun. Yeah. Um, I think we always forget to have fun. Um, and uh, that's the most important thing, I think. That's what it's all about right now. I mean, there's so much going on in the world. If we could just have a little bit of fun for three minutes of a song, I mean, that means so much to so many people. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We'll check back in with you a little bit later in the show. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So I know what you're thinking. I want to see some students perform, and I would have to agree with you. So let's start off the show with Sophia Shai from Westerville South. Come on in. Come talk to me. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Good, good. And how's it going over there in Ohio with all the lockdown and all that kind of stuff? It's going pretty good. Stuff is starting to open up and the weather's been really good, so. That's good, that's good. So, I hear that you might be wanting to go into a future in the medical field. Tell us a little bit about that. I don't know. I've just always been really interested in it and I just think it's something I just really wanna pursue. That's cool. I mean, it's kind of like um, what the teachers were talking about earlier that so many students in theater, obviously some people, you know, want to be performers and technicians, but there are a lot of students who are doing theater just for high school and they have other plans for when they graduate. But I'm, I imagine that you've learned so much in terms mm -hmm. of public speaking and, and, and confidence boosting in theater. Um, so on that subject, what do you think you have learned in theater that you can use outside in your regular life? I just think the best thing I've learned in theater is just honestly trying like just finding a friend wherever you end up like you can always meet people and you can always just introduce yourself and be really open-minded to people who you're around and it just helps you make like lifelong friends and teach you how to make friends and be friendly towards people i agree i agree so tonight you're singing from freaky friday a newer musical based on the book mm -hmm. and film of the same name and i didn't realize this but there has been four Freaky Friday movies. I had no idea. I was just thinking of the one with Lindsay Lohan, right? Yeah. But there's more. There's more. I was su so surprised. Um. So what, um, what brought you to choose this song to sing tonight? Um. Well, we did this musical this fall, and I was Ellie Blake in it, and it was honestly one of my favorite roles I've ever done, and it just taught me a lot about performing and theater. And this song is honestly really, it like speaks to me, and it's just kind of like, be strong and like courageous. And stuff. That's great. That's great. Well, let's hear it. Um, everybody, this is uh, Sophia Shy with No More Fear from Freaky Friday. Take it away. What is this feeling that I'm feeling? Like I've shot right through the ceiling. Is it only the caffeine and the sugar and the pizza? Dear me. I have three slices of that pizza. Our carbs are feeling that I'm feeling like I'm losing it but dealing. It's alarming but appealing and somehow healing. How long has it been since this old heart has skipped a beat? How long have I kept an even keel? How hard have I worked to keep our lives so calm and neat? And how good does this freaking chaos feel? No, I don't have the first idea what else may be in store. I know I won't be frightened anymore. No more fear, no more fright. I go bold or I go home. It starts tonight. Oh God, have I taught my daughter to be cautious at all costs? Have I made her somehow be afraid? Have I held too tightly after all we both have lost? And how do I clean up this mess I made? Cause clearly I can't promise I'll turn out okay, but here's the most important thing I'll say, no more fear, no more dread, no 
more dwelling on the danger We'll dare to live instead No more sadness Not one tear We'll be tough and tough together No more fear No more shyness or embarrassment No dividends, no doubt That self-consciousness and anxiousness Just throw that stuff right off Cause I thought I taught you manners But I may have made you meek And a girl can be a good girl Without ever being weak If you have to fight, then fight And I'll be the first to cheer No more waiting Great stuff. Great, great performance. Thank you. You're getting a lot of, uh, got a lot of love in the comments as well. So I think that speaks to um, how good it was. I saw some of that. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. See you later. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, really starting off in a good foot. Uh, next, we have a student singing from a show. It's one of my favorite shows. I'm excited to hear this. Let's bring him in. Eric Sanchez, come talk to me. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good, good, good to hear. So I wanted to ask you first um, about your first theater experience. Do you remember um, a, a really early experience? Um, probably the early, earliest theater experience I had was when I was in seventh grade. Um, my brother actually is in, is in drama. He's a year older than me. And he was doing production of The Jazzy Chaperone. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, it's his first theater show. So the whole family went to go see it. And when we go, went to go see it, I just like, seeing the whole all the actors on, and characters on stage it made me feel like it was something i wanted to be a part of and like there was so much energy just coming from the stage that i knew that it was something that i wanted to do and wanted to, wanted to pursue pursue when i was older that, that's great i know that feeling exactly you're watching a show and you have, kind of have that fear of missing out almost you're like i need to be a part of this um that's great so i wanted to ask you next um do you have any dream roles that you want to shoot off just um, name any roles? i don't really have dream roles but if i were to like choose one i'd say seymour from little shop of horrors okay yeah really like think of dream roles because then if i audition for that show and then i don't want to really be let down but yeah seymour is like a great part that i would want to play in the future that's a good perspective to have yeah um what would you say to a parent of a student who wants to do theater oh um i would tell them to come see one of our shows because they may have doubts about like why they shouldn't go see it. But um, if they go see one of their shows, like I can promise them that it will be a, a fantastic experience. Like I had when I first saw my first show, it's just getting to see people play new characters, a different perspective, different roles. It's just so amazing for children, for them to like have to express themselves in that way through theater, th through singing and dancing. So I would encourage the, the parent just to put their child in theater and tell them that this is something good that will help them in the future with jobs and school and everything. Great answer. Great answer. So tonight you're singing from Falsettos, which originally was three one-act musicals combined into a full-length show, most recently revived in 2016, starring Christian Borle and Andrew Reynolds and a bunch of cool people. What drew you to this show? Uh, this song? Yeah, yeah. The song, the show, everything. Well, I first uh, heard this song when I was looking for uh, an audition song for the last show that I did, Into the Woods. And... Uh, I just did the ending of the song, but uh, I realized that I wanted to do this, the, the whole song straight through because it starts with like this like slow emotional uh, part, and then the end it's like this like loud like the, all the emotions coming out. And so I wanted to try my attempt at doing this song. Yeah. Well, let's hear it. I'm excited, everybody. This is Eric Sanchez with the games I play from Falsettos. Take it away. For trouble, I do not accept blame. I have a good and a bad side, but they're one and the same. I 
ask me to arouse you, I will rise and obey. These are the games I play. I school every morning, then bathe and drink tea. I've been playing canasta disastrously. All my recreation seems to soon be okay. These are the games I play. It's tough with love. Love's tough to show. Face by face, the music. It's a song that I was waiting to hear so long, so long ago. On the horses, I die by degree. I'm sure his force is a tribute to me. Ask me if I love him, it depends on the day. These are the games I play. It's tough, my friend. Love's looking strong. Play the music, it's a song that I was waiting to hear for much too long. Years, years too long. It hurts not to love you, it hurts when the fate. It's hard when part of a bizarre playing family charade. Ask me if I need him, get him out of my way. These are, these are the games, these are the games, these are the only games I play. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Thank you. We're getting a lot of love in the comments tonight. Keep that stuff coming. These students are awesome. That's what Kumi just said. Um, yeah, that was great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. Well, I think it's time we check back in with our special guest tonight, and let's see what she's thinking of the show so far. Let's bring back in Jennifer Kumiyama. Come on in. Wow. I know. Wow. I know. These. I mean, we've only had two so far, and already. I know. They're I, just. So amazing. I'm so, so impressed. You guys are doing a wonderful job, and I can't wait to hear who's coming up. They really are. So I wanted to start off um, by mentioning that you were the first performer in a wheelchair in the world to perform on any Disney stage. How did that feel, and what was that experience like for you? Well, I, I was 22 when I got the job, and to be honest, when I did get the job, I was fulfilling my own personal goals and dreams. So it was very um, self-serving and it wasn't until the show actually started and I realized what kind of impact the show had on people and what kind of impact I had on, you know, all of the guests who came in from every corner of the world who, who saw the show. And I think that's really where I started to dive deeper into being a disability advocate um, for, you know, performers with varying levels of disabilities, but also just for people with disabilities, period. So it, it was a really awesome, it was the best 13 years of my life. And um, I've made so many amazing friends who are now my chosen family. And uh, I, I will always cherish those memories in that time. That's fantastic. And as you mentioned, not only did you make history, you also performed in Aladdin at Disney for 13 years. What yeah. is it like performing a show for that long? Well, to be honest with you, when it was all said and done, I kind of, it, it felt like it happened in the blink of an eye. Mm. Um, you know, um, being performers, I think it's, you know, it's really hard sometimes to focus on our own personal lives because we have to make sure that we're always, as they, as they call it, on, on yeah. stage. But, um, you know, I, I was 22 when I started and 36 when I ended. So um, I, I grew up there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, when did you first have an interest in theater and performing? When did, when did the theater bug, as they call it, when did it bite you, so to speak? Uh, my grandma took my parents and I to go see Annie. Mm. 
Mm. Um, when my father was stationed in Germany mm. and wow. I was uh, about four years old. And I remember that. But then when I we came back to the States when I was in the first grade, or right before kindergarten, actually. Um, and in the first grade, I did a Christmas pageant and I was the Good Ship Lollipop, which was mm -hmm. kind of embarrassing. But now that I think about it, it was kind of really cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's when the bug bit me and it was just all um, downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. Some could say, I guess. Uh, Some could say. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You are an inspiration to so many, um, but I wanted to ask you what or who inspires you? Oh, what inspires me? Um, obviously, live theater inspires me. Um, seeing different interpretations of of uh, classic works of art um, and uh, Bernadette Peters. Yes, she was definitely an inspiration of mine growing up um, in high school, and um, I, I still absolutely love her. Um, but I think what inspires me is knowing how much uh, theater continues to change the lives of our young people and um, how that there changes, you know, the future of what theater looks like for us all over the world. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, and finally, I wanted to ask, what advice would you give to a performer watching tonight that feels held back by something about them physically? I think in this industry, especially as a performer, um, you have to be your biggest fan. If you want to have somebody be a fan of yours, you have to be your own cheerleader. It took a long time for me to realize that, which I think is why I was 22 when I booked my first professional job. But I, th I think after I realized that, that I'm worthy of being a working singer, uh, that, you know, the things started coming to me. It's just, um, kind of leaving yourself open for good things and, and, leaving yourself open to put good things out into the world. So believe in yourself first. Yeah. Well, that's great. And with that, I mean, we're going to have you perform. Everybody, this is Jennifer Kumiyama with She Used to Be Mine from Waitress. Take it away. Sorry, one second. It's not simple to say that most days I don't recognize me these shoes and this apron that place and its patrons have taken more than I gave them. It's not easy to know I'm not anything like I used to be, although it's true I was never attention sweet center. I still remember that girl She's imperfect, but she tries She is good, but she lies She is hard on herself She is broken and won't ask for help she is messy, but she's kind. She is lonely most of the time. She is all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She is gone, but she used to be mine. And it's not what I asked for. Sometimes life just slips in through the back door and carves out a person and makes you believe it's all true. And now I got you and you're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know 
I would give it all back for a chance to start over and rewrite an ending with you. For that girl that I knew who was reckless just enough, who gets hurt, but who learns how to toughen up when she's bruised and gets used by a man who can't love. Then she'll get stuck and be scared of the life that's inside of her, growing stronger each day, till it finally reminds her to fight just a little to bring back the fire in her eyes she is gone she used to be mine oh it used to be She is messy, but she's kind. She is lonely most of the time. She is all of these mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She is gone, but she used to be mine. absolutely amazing amazing thank you thank you you're, you're, i mean you're so inspiring and you've inspired so many and i guarantee you've inspired a lot of students and parents who are watching tonight thank you thank you thanks for having me yeah thanks for coming on the show uh, we'll see you in the zoom after party all right bye 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 i mean guys i mean that was fantastic and let's keep let's keep going on the train of fantastic and bring in another student performer this is Bella Price from Westerville South High School. Come on in. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. So I wanted to ask you first, what might you say to a parent of a student who wants to do theater? Oh, okay. Um, I would tell them, absolutely let them join theater. I mean, there's it's completely harmless. It's an amazing opportunity to become more confident as a person. And no matter what career you choose to go down, it gives you so many social skills and like i said confidence skills so yeah great and and for you what has been your best theater experience uh, my best i mean there's so many and all of them have been overwhelmingly positive but my favorite experience was probably when i did my first show at high school because i was just a freshman and i was cast while i was still in eighth grade and it allowed me to connect with people in the in the department and it helped me grow as, an, as a performer. It was like the first real show I did. So it was great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I had not really heard of the show you're singing from tonight before. It's called 35 millimeter, the musical. It's a multimedia exposition musical with photographs and, and music, which sounds really cool. So how did you find the show? Uh, my director actually introduced me to it. Um, he just, we were just thinking of shows to do like as side projects and he kind of just threw the title out there and I listened to it and I found the song that I'm performing and it's, it's really resonated with me. So that's great. And lastly, do you have any dream roles? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have, I have dream roles. Um, I try not to get too hung up on them, but I love, I love Janice from Mean Girls. Mm. Um, Kathy from the last five years is kind of a basic one, but. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Um, we, we can yeah. be basic. We can be basic. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's have you perform. Everybody, this is Bella Price with The Party Goes With You from 35 Millimeter, the musical. Take it away. Thank you. and faces Why should we clean you up for vows in gold Our fraught affair turns 
solitaire. Wishing to take back merely one of my essays, aching to be yours and have my story all retold. But when you strike your goodbye pose, everybody knows, everybody knows the party. Well, it goes to end, damn it all, darling. The party goes with you. And when we're dancing nose to nose, darling, do you suppose, so oh, darling, do you suppose, this party could be just as you and I, your life, oh, oh, the gayest party sad, but true is true. The party in the party of my life. Great, great performance. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we've talked a lot about tonight about pathways and different pathways that theater students are going to take. What are your plans for the future? Uh, are you going to keep uh, doing theater? <laughs> I mean, I hope so. I still have another two years of high school left to like kind of figure out my future plans out. Right. But I've totally found a passion with this, and I can't imagine my life without it. So I'm definitely planning on doing something related to theater in the future. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. No worries. Of course. See ya. Well, I mean, these are some great performances tonight. And we always have great performances, but these are spe spectacular, dare I say. Um, let's keep the ball rolling. We have one more student performance. We're, keep, we're running a tight ship over here. Um, let's bring on Kira Ward from Charter Oak High School. Hi there. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Good. Good to hear. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what has been your best high school theater experience so far? Ooh. My best high school theater experience was definitely the last show we just did, Into the Woods. Mm -hmm. Um, even though the weekend, the last weekend got canceled, um, our cast got so close and it was such a fun show to do and I had the best time being a part of it. Fantastic. So I hear that you want to continue in professional theater and perhaps work for Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, what is your dream role or position at the parks? Oh, um, I would love to be in a parade. Anything, That's, yeah. parade, a dancer or a character. I would love That's to be a performer at Disney. That sounds fun. Personally, I've always wanted to do uh, a skipper on Jungle Cruise. I feel like that'd be a good. I feel like that'd be a fun oh, job. Yeah, you know? that'd yeah. be a lot of fun. So tonight you're singing from Newsies. Obviously, yeah. Newsies is based on the film of the same name, starring yeah. a very young Batman, Christian Bale. Uh, yeah. Why'd you choose to sing this song? I chose this song because it spoke to me so much in the times that we're having right now with all the protests going on, and it's such an important issue. And I mean these protests were happening in the musical as well. And she wants to uh, be a voice to spread the, the movement. Yeah. And I felt the same way. <laughs> That's great. Well, I think we should just, I think we should just let you perform everybody. This is Kira Ward with Watch What Happens from Newsies. Take it away. But you know, so they say, all I know is I don't know what to write or the right way to write it. This is big, lady, don't screw it up. This is not some little vaudeville I'm reviewing. Poor little kids versus French greedy sour pusses. Ha! Huh, it's a cinch that could practically write itself. What's poop does? Because I may have mentioned I have no clue what I 
That was great. Um, I wanted to bring in Kumi and see if she had anything to say about that great performance. See if she if she's there. I I think so. I well I, well I loved it. Um, first off, um, I don't think we could get her get her in. But anyway, regardless, that was a fantastic performance. Um, and I hope that you continue this in the future. And I hope to see you in the Disneyland parade someday. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Well, see you later. Wow. That was it. Guys, I mean, that was a great show. We got some great performances. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching, everybody for coming out tonight. Um, thank you to the teachers. Thank you to the students. Thank you to Jennifer Kumiyama. It has been a great show. Remember to tune in tomorrow as Jason is back with Lori Metcalf, an artist in conversation. And I'll be back soon in a virtual cabaret highlight show and some more shows later in July showcasing student talent. And it's almost the end of June. And can you believe that? June's just flo flown by. Um, June is Pride Month, so we want to say happy Pride from all of us here at Project with Jason. And as I say every week, but not every week because it's only been two weeks, um, well, watch out for each other and love and forgive everybody. It's a good life. Enjoy it. I'm Louis Gallagher. Good night.
Hey, it's Jason. If you like what you saw, take a second and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell and follow us on all social media. Thanks for watching.